It's another installment of our interviews uh, with the leaders of political parties. Uh, today, or rather tonight at the PISO, we have uh, the leader of the IFP, um, Vilengosi Nishabisa, who will basically share uh, with us um, their manifesto plan and, of course, the uh, uh, issues related to his party, the IFP, and, of course, the vision going forward. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, interview uh, at the PISO. And, of course, I'm not going to waste time because he is here. Uh, Mr. Shabisa, uh, welcome to the SAPC and, of course, uh, uh, full view. Good evening, Mr. Mbeche, as well as the South African people who are viewing this program broadcasted by SAPC. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to go perhaps detail to detail in terms of what your manifesto uh, said because uh, this very SAPC um, broadcasted to millions of South Africans. But obviously I'll touch on a number of things really that uh, um, are to do with the IFP. Well, as we begin our interview, and when I look up, um, I see a picture uh, looming large of uh, the former leader of the party, the President Emeritus. Um, <coughs> This is the election, obviously, the local government elections. Perhaps one interesting question. Will the IFP, or is the IFP able to operate without Dr. Abtelis? Indeed, uh, Mr. Mbeche, <clears throat> the IFP has a new leader, which is Velenko Sini Klabisa, the one who is leading the campaign. As you saw, the manifesto was presented by myself. And on Sunday, I will be in Houghton to launch our provincial campaign. On Thursday next week, I will be at Mpumalanga province. And I will be moving across the country of South Africa as the leader of the IFP. What we did as an organization, we dedicated this election to Prince Mangosutu Telezi to acknowledge his role, contribution to our country. We often do things in a wrong way. When a person is no longer amongst us, we make many dedications to him while he was still alive we behaved as if he was not there. That is why we gave this election to him as our recognition by the IFP of his role. But definitely we are able to do things while he is not there on daily operations as I am running the campaign. Are you not worried um, that this could be interpreted uh, by others as a party um, struggling to um, part with its former leader? I'm not worried at all <clears throat> because if you could look at our launch of the National Manifesto, we launched the manifesto led by the president of the organization. There was nothing short in our launch and we are capable of taking the party forward. That is why whatever other people are saying, it doesn't affect us. But we know many people are not happy because of the good relationship they see between me and Prince Mangosutu Telezi working as a team with no contradictions, no conflicts, we are able to share the platform and complement each other, and that is what we need in any country to move forward. I think maybe fair enough um, from what you are saying, but I think um, as you are well aware uh, in terms of protocols as well, um, the main speaker is the last. I mean, in the event where the president speaks, you know that that is the end. We saw the manifesto launch of the IFP where you delivered the manifesto launch. But after you, <coughs> uh, Prince Butelezi came and 
to someone who may not be familiar with what is happening here would clearly think uh, Dr. Butelis remains the party leader. Yeah, but to someone who knows things, <clears throat> in a manifesto launch, the main item is the launch of the manifesto. And what determines who is the leader and the main guest speaker is the one who launches the manifesto. Someone can come as complimenting. Prince Mangusutu came as an experienced South African patriot, making his contribution and attesting to the track record of the IFP, which was set on stage by the president. That was very clear as to who was the guest speaker. Okay, I think I've heard you say um, you are dedicating, I think, the selections to him. But uh, clearly, he is one of the most recognizable faces uh, in the country um, as, as a leader, as an elder, and of course, as a human being. Um, even in your posters, I, I still think you could have perhaps uh, maybe both of you on the pictures, but still, he is the only one on the picture. The, the sole reason why we decided not to use two pictures, we did not want to create <clears throat> a scenario where it will be like there are two party leaders. Strategically, we decided to use one face to which we dedicate our campaign, mm. but every campaign is led by the current president, we did not want to confuse people because people read many things in between, rather be precise, mm. that this is the face we are using and time is coming where my face will be used when we have done with dedicating our election to Prince Mangusu Tupteles. I think you've just said a very important point. You said the reason why you don't want to use two faces because that may create confusion amongst people. But here you are, you've basically said you are leading the campaign. Of course, you are leading the campaign. Mm -hmm. But on the posters, it is someone else. <clears throat> so is that not a confusion on its own? Is it not a contradiction in terms? It should not be a contradiction at all to all people of goodwill, because we have explained this point clearly that the face of Prince Mangusu Tupteleze is our decision to recognize his role. But the whole campaign, right from the launch of the manifesto up to the election day, the person who will be running the campaign, who will be doing interviews, moving across the country, is the president of the organization. Of course, as a member of the IFP, Prince Mangusutu Telezi, like every leader of the IFP, will be deployed to address people in various quotas of our country, but clearly it will be demonstrated that the campaign is led by the president. Well, I think we are just about to conclude on this picture. I just needed us to, to really clarify it because um, I think perhaps your membership may be clear of what is happening but I don't think you are t targeting your membership alone um, only. So the broader populace would want to know what exactly is happening. So I think that's, that's one of the things. In fact, um, in, in one of the pledges, <coughs> you even go as far as to say, uh, I think you, you're pledging your, your, your support uh, to him, I think, uh, in terms of his values. Um, are you not worried that this is creating a bit of a cult and perhaps, I mean, he um, he's of advanced age. At some point, um, um, so he will no longer be around. Are you not worried, worried that um, uh, perhaps uh, this cult uh, image we are creating, you may struggle after him? No, no, no. <clears throat> we are not worried at all because we know what we are doing. And we do not want to be confused by people who might have negative intentions when it comes to the IFP and want to confuse the whole idea. We are very clear. 
We know the instances where the president of the IFP, which is the one that is speaking now, must take the lead. And we know the decision we also made in terms of dedicating these elections to Prince Mangusu Tupteli. We are able to separate the two. You know, as I said in the beginning, it is always bad when people recognize a person during his or her funeral yeah. or after death. We wanted to play it the other way around, that yeah. while Prince Mangusu Tupteli is still active and amongst us, we must give due recognition to him because mm. he is one of the most people who made a contribution in our country. Have you overruled him uh, on some of the things as the leader? Yes, on certain instances where I had to make my decision, I make my decision. Of course, when you work as a collective, in most cases, you have a consensus on issues, but there are issues as a leader where you need to make a clear-cut decision, and I'm able to do that. Okay, I think we, 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 we've, we've dealt with that. It's, it's pretty uh, clear from what you are saying. Um, <clears throat> as the party, the IFP, uh, in this province, you are governing, um, I think, about 10 to 13 municipalities. Yes. I think. Um, you have been saying in your, in your <coughs> manifesto that uh, your track record will um, stand you in good stead come the election date. Is the IFP only looking at KwaZulu Natal or in South Africa as a whole? Let me start off by saying <clears throat> the IFP is a liberation movement. It was not formed after 1994 when we had achieved our freedom as people of South Africa, but it was formed in 1975, which is 46 years ago, with sole intentions of liberating our people from dispossession and oppression and also protect the vulnerable, which is women and children. That is also driving us even today. I'm coming to your point. Our country got freedom in 1994, where we all have an equal right to vote, all of us. But the truth of the matter, we are not yet equal. Some are very poor, while some are very rich. That gap is what we need to concentrate on and close it. Our women and children are suffering on a daily basis. Yes, they are free, but they still suffer in a new South Africa. The IFP is contesting eight provinces in South Africa out of nine provinces. As we have launched the National Manifesto in Wazulu Natal, I have indicated I'm in Gauteng on Sunday. That indicates we are not based in Wazulu Natal also, only. On Thursday, on the 14th of October, I will be launching our manifesto in Limpombo. And on 14 is Mpumalanga, not Limpombo. And thereafter, we will be in Limpombo Northwest, Free State, throughout the eight provinces. Mm. That should tell every South African that the IFP is not only based in Wazulu Natal, but our fresh record where you can trace us and taste our performance is Wazulu Natal. In Wazulu Natal, prior 1994, the IFP was responsible of governing the erstwhile Guazulu government. And after 1994, we governed the province of Guazulu Natal and many municipalities. That is where you can trace our record. Yes. Um, I think you've really been touting your record, uh, that um, your record speaks for itself. Um, 
you must be aware of some forensic um, report into Zululand district, uh, which has basically said the mayor there, the district mayor, um, involved himself in the bid processes. So as a result, he's supposed to have been removed from the position. But as you and I sit here, he remains in that position. Do you think that record stands in good stead? The truth must be told to the people of South Africa. The clip that was played implicating the mayor to have been involved in the procurement process was a fabricated clip because it did not show everything. It only showed a small portion where the mayor said, people must go, and can I give the background? Because if we don't do so, we leave the people not knowing the truth. Yeah, yeah no, 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 I'll, I'll give you the, the, the opportunity, uh, Mr. Shabisa. But I am talking about the report, uh, which, which, which um, has been uh, commissioned by Cogta here in KZN, where the mayor uh, is let alleged. Me come, let me sure. come to that report. The forensic report that was done by Cogta was a kangaroo forensic report. Why? If you make an investigation, investigation investigating Mr. Mbeche, you also give Mr. Mbeche an opportunity to say his side of the story. That 106 investigation did not do that. It did not give the mayor the opportunity to express his side of the story, did not give the speaker, did not give the MM. That is why the IFP took the investigation report for review in the court of law. And the people who have been dragging feet to come forward is cocked because they know mm. that investigation is not going to stand in the court of law because it was politically motivated and they wanted to judge the IFP on political ground as we know. They want to take control of Zululand. They cannot get Zululand through back door. They will have to get it through the ballot box where people must vote. And we are confident, Mr. Mbeche, yeah. come the 1st of November, yeah. the people of Zululand yeah. will vote the IFP because of what they, what they know as delivery done by the IFP in that district. Still on the report, about Ulus, a similar report, I think the Mdambo forensic report, also talking about uh, irregular appointments, the awarding of contracts irregularly. So that is under the IFP rule. Is it still Kangaroo as well, that one? Still, a number of uh, investigations done by Cocta at Abakulusi have not been standing in the court of law. And you know what? At Abakulusi, Cocta has appointed an administrator after administrator, they have all long stayed. Why? The reason is simple. Cocta wants to rule Abakulusi through the back door. We will not allow that. We will challenge any kangaroo investigation. We are open to fair investigation. And once we get the truth that something wrong was done, we are not afraid to take decisions against the mayor. The IFP is on record. We have changed so many mayors. We have fired the councillors. We are not afraid to take a decision once there is tangible facts. But we are not going to work on kangaroo reports that are politically motivated. What is happening in Ngutu municipality, which is under administration now? The Ngutu municipality, we can go back, Mr. Mbeje. In 2016, the ANC wanted by hook or crook to control Ngutu. They eventually disbanded Ngutu. We went on a rerun. We gave them a showdown. The IFP won Ngutu municipality when the ANC had brought the whole top six to campaign at Ngutu. And after failing to get control of Ngutu, they want to use the back door through the administrator. Even now, we are not worried. Come the 1st of November, I will be attesting to you. Mm. Because people of Ngutu will vote the IFP. Why? 
they see service delivery with their own eyes and they can touch it with their own hands. If Cocta is used to corrupt municipalities, mm. they must do fair investigations that are not politically motivated. You know, there are so many municipalities, like yeah. go to Umkanyagude. Oh, by the it's way. It's a, a known fact. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to Umkanyagude. Oh. I'm coming. Maybe let's just conclude on Ngutu. Okay. Uh, I know that you challenged um, the first, uh, the first admin it being placed on administration and then and you were successful but, in doing that yes but yeah. again um the the, 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 the the i think the court also agreed that uh, given that some of the councillors actually did not even attend meetings so which led led to the situation where it shows that perhaps cocktail was uh, reasonable in placing it under administration. I think that's why, as we sit here, it's under administration and it's under your control. But Mr. Mbeche, I know Ngutu municipality very well and the developments taking place there. In terms of meeting attendance, that is not true. You see, Mr. Mbeche, when the national minister overturned the decision by MEC for Cocta in Wazulu Natal, is because the national minister was fair. But you know what? Politically, they might have gone to the backside of the room and said, no, 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 allow us, minister, because we have a political decision in what we are doing, and eventually the administrator was approved. But I can assure you, a fair investigation will not pick anything which is corruption there. It will not pick anything which says councillors are not attending the council meeting because there is a procedure. Mm. If councillors do not attend, they must lose their membership as councillors. But there are blatant realities at Umkanyagute where for months and months councillors were not attending the council meeting. But simply because it's an ANC-led municipality, no decision was taken. But I, I understand the Mkanyagut is under your, your control now. Only now, and we are not the majority in terms of numbers, but the ANC councillors, they decided to vote the IFP because they said ANC has failed to rule to govern Umkanyagute again, Mr. Mbeche. Okay. There is a circulating voice note yes. by the current speaker, ANC speaker, mm. where the ANC speaker is saying, we have failed the people of Umkanyagute to give them water mm. simply because of corruption that is engulfing Umkanyagute. That is said by the ANC speaker, which is a testimony mm. that even that speaker agrees that ANC failed Umkanyagute, which therefore tell the people of Umkanyagute, come the 1st of November, bring back okay. the IFP Le to power. Let's talk about Umkanyagute today. I understand that there is a protest because people have not been paid. Yes. And that's under the, IFP. That is so you can't, you can't point the, to the ANC now. No, no, no. But we must put things into perspective. Umkanyagute is a bankrupt municipality and it was run down by ANC. It is not secret that monies that went to Umkanyagute were abused by ANC through corrupt activities. That is a known fact in Umkanyagute. Let me come to the, pro the, the protest regarding the non-payment of the staff. You know what? What the staff is feeling, the pinch they are feeling now, the people of Umkanyagute have stayed with this pain for 10 years, living without water. To live without water is a very difficult thing, and this was brought to the residents of Umkanyagute by the ANC. All the civil servants should do should join the people of goodwill at Umkanyagute on the 1st of November and vote the IFP. Under a fully led Umkanyagute, the people, the staff of Umkanyagute have never reached a stage where they are not paid their salaries. But this has been accumulating right from the period when the ANC was in charge because that municipality is literally bankrupt. From what I'm hearing, uh, Mr. Tlabisa, is that 
Um, almost, uh, in fact, not even almost from our discussion now, every problem that um, I have mentioned in the IFP-led municipality, you're blaming it on the ANC. At what point do you, as the IFP, take responsibility to say, yes, uh, perhaps the ANC did this because we lacked here and there? I will own a credible investigation by the ANC, but I will always disown any kangaroo investigation that wants to rule a municipality that the IFP won through the ballot box. I will always do so. You know, if the ANC can come with tangible results that was done fair, giving the other side an opportunity to express their view. We know how investigations should be done. A one of six investigation has a certain procedure that you must follow. If you override it, we will reject that investigation because you decided to override the process because you want to prosecute the IFP unfairly for political reasons. As the IFP, we are not afraid when things are not going right to recall a mayor. We have recalled so many. We are not afraid to show the door a councillor who is not doing his or her job. We have done it to so many. And you know what? The day our mayor or our councillor goes to court on a criminal charge of corruption, we will swiftly take an action. We are on record. We do not have a mayor mm. or a councillor. We never had a premier or a member of provincial legislature or national assembly who is going up and down to court due to corruption. Once we have that, we will be swift in taking an action. Whether that has been raised by ANC or whoever, but a criminal charge of corruption, once it has been laid on the basis of evidence, we will take an action. But no to Kongaru mm -hmm. investigations. Um, it, it, it is a bit, um, perhaps a thin line, um, because you are saying it's Kongaru investigations, uh, politically motivated. Um, but this is a state institution, um, Cogta, for example. So at what point are you going to then recognize an uh, investigation done by the state, uh, the, the, by the properly constitutionally mandated state? Because from what I'm hearing is that because um, those investigations uh, went against you, you basically say the ANC uh, engineered them. But you see, Mr. Mbeche, we are not running away from these investigations. All we are saying, we would not allow the abuse of the state resources by COCTA to initiate investigations that are done wrongly. The day COCTA follows a procedure for 106 investigation, we will own the report. The day they give the other side of the story to tell their side of the story, we will own those reports. But as long as they don't do that, we will not allow them to use the state's resources to achieve the political desired ends. On that one, we will not move. All the COCTA should be doing and the ANC should be doing. Mm. If they feel there is something wrong, they must properly constitute an investigation. Let me touch on this issue. The, the MEC for COCTA mm. has gone to the media as even of today. He, on his mouth, alleges that the breakfast that was done here in Durban by ZDM costed 5 million rand. You know what the MEC should have done? Because he is directly responsible for the municipalities, he would have asked Zululand municipality, give me the information before I make a comment in public. But because he is politically motivated, he did not do that. Tomorrow, I will share the invoice with the nation 
that the invoice from the hotel, this is what was paid in the hotel mm. for other activities, and this is what was paid. And in total is 134,000, not 5 million, not, million. not 200,000, 134,000. But the MEC is talking of 5 million. Why is he doing this? He decide to behave as if he doesn't know how to get the truth, simply because he wants to paint a bad picture about a municipality that is led by the IFP. We have requested this information. The information is satisfactory to mm -hmm. us that not 5 million, but 134,000. OK, maybe let's move on to uh, your, 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 your objectives as you embark on this election. Um, who are you targeting? Which vote are you targeting? Um, because it would appear that the IFP is confined to rural municipalities. Um, can we see the IFP challenging seriously for municipalities like Etewin, for example? You see, um, <clears throat> Mr. Mbeche, we have filtered our candidates, if you come to Deben, for instance, in all wards of Etewini, the IFP is going to contest them. In all wards in Peter Marisbeck, which is the second biggest city in Wazulu Natal, we are contesting every ward in Peter Marisbeck. As I indicated that we are contesting eight provinces in South Africa, we have filtered our candidates both in rural, urban, and townships. And if it comes to who is our target in terms of the voters, we are targeting every South African, young, middle age, and old. Because all people of South Africa will make an impact in terms of deciding who governs them in their area. And the young people is our main target. Because young people and women who constitute 57%, no, no, 53% nationwide, but in Wazulu Natal, women and youth constitute 57%. Yeah. And the age group between 20 years and 49 years is 60%. So now, the youth, because they still have a future to live. It is young people who are unemployed. Yeah. It is young people who are suffering their dreams dying before yeah. them under the ruling uh, party. Our target, therefore, at a broad spectrum, South African people, young people, women of South Africa. In the event uh, you are not able to win outright majorities <coughs> in some municipalities, um, who is your preferred coalition partner? I know uh, there will be a number of negotiations that will take place, but uh, when you're sitting and seeing, well, perhaps those ones would be easier to work with. The IFP will be contesting these elections alone, but once people have voted and expressed their view, and there, were, there is no clear winner in a particular municipality, the IFP believes in core existence of political parties that have a common view in taking forward the needs of the people. We are open to every political party that does not promote racism, that does not work against a certain gender. It could be any political party as long as it does not promote racism. If we agree in terms of our broad issues on policies, and we also agree that people come first, we will get into a coalition with anyone, but having clarified that that party is not racist and is not against any gender in terms of the people of South Africa. Are you eyeing the ANC in all of this? Any political party, with which we have a common view in terms of servicing the people of South Africa, and we agree that we are not racist, 
and we are not excluding any gender. Yeah. It could be any political party. I'll tell you why I'm specific on the ANC. Uh, the, uh, the former leader of the party has gone on record to say he actually would like to see reconciliation between the two parties. Where are you uh, with regards to that? The reconciliation is another matter. But the coalition is also another matter. For record, uh, yeah. Mr. Mbeche, we are in a coalition with the EFF and the DA in most municipalities in Wazulu Natal. Of course, we are yeah. also in a coalition with the ANC at, uh, in Johannesburg. Why? We are not exclusive to any political party that has a common interest yeah. in serving the needs Just of the people. The issue uh, of a coalition yes. and a reconciliation yes. are two separate yes. matters. I'm on, we, I'm on, on coalition Let me now. come on coalition, therefore. On there the is a team on, 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 on reconciliation. reconciliation. There is with the ANC specifically, because yes. the, 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 the President Emeritus has made it clear that he would like to see reconciliation. So that's why I'm saying, where are you with regards to that? Yes, Mr. Mbeche, there is a team between the ANC and the IFP at a national level that are working on a reconciliation program. But we will not compensate reconciliation with coalition. We will not. Sure, sure. Because <clears throat> If we do not agree with the ANC on issues of corruption, we will not compensate recon reconciliation and support them on coalition. We will not. We are clear on that one. Reconciliation is about correcting the mistakes and the wrongs of the past and setting the record correct for the benefit of our nation and ensure that the people of South Africa, especially blacks who are the majority, they reach a stage of reconciliation and forget about the past and build a new future for the sake of our children and for the sake of our country. But building our country, we believe we can do with any political party. In the event you and the ANC um, by and large, you, I think you represent the same constituency. Yes. In the event, you agree that actually what divides us is really not fundamental. Is there a possibility of a merger between the ANC and the IFP at some point? You, you see, when you come to the issue of a merger, <clears throat> if political parties merge, yeah, based, I'm coming. Yes, okay. I'm honest, not a Sure. For two political parties to merge and become one. They have to iron out policies. The IFP was founded on the principles of the ANC as founded in 1912. Mm. The current ANC has moved on those policies. It will mean a major shift from the ANC point of view to make the merger with the IFP a reality. But reconciliation is a separate matter on merger. Mm -hmm. Because a merger is determined by policies. Yes. But reconciliation is determined by the wrongs and the realities that must be corrected between the history of the ANC yeah. and the IFP. Just so that I am clear when I live here, uh, as the IFP, uh, given that uh, uh, you may actually agree. Are you open to the merger, though? Assuming you agree on all that which you have said, as the IFP, are you open to the merger with the ANC? You see, the merger, Mr. Mbeche... No, based on what you've just told yes, me, that yes, you agree on everything. Yes. <clears throat> the merger will be an outcome of a deep reflection and being truthful on the reconciliation and shifting on the issue of policies, which really will be a process that must be given its own time to unfold. Because if I jump to the conclusion, you know, people might say, but you agreed on this one. That is why I feel mm. the issue of a merger will be determined by a number of issues that must be dealt with by the two political organizations. And if they agree, one, 
on telling the truth on the history that split at the IFP and the ANC because that is where we must begin. Yeah. There is a truth which has not been told the people of South Africa that actually the formation of the IFP was with the mandate of the ANC and the IFP was based in, and is still based on the philosophies and principles of the ANC as established in 1912. We need to agree on that one so that the people know the propaganda that was yep. told people about the IFP, the ANC must own it up. Yep. That is the beginning of a long road to reconciliation which might eventually determine a merger when things are done honestly. My follow-up question, why does the former leader always, um, when he's wearing his beret, he's, he either has Luthuli or Tambo or one of the ANC uh, former leaders? He is a torchbearer of the original principles of the ANC. He was mentored by Inkosi Luthuli. He was mentored by Prixley Isagagaseme the founder of the ANC. That is why, therefore, he identifies himself with these leaders because he leaves the principles. They wanted the people of South Africa to leave. These leaders, if they can wake up today and see the kind of corruption that has robbed our people through service delivery, they will cry and be in tears if they see millions of South Africans who are still living in informal settlement, yet the revelations at Zondo Commission, they point in one organization as the one that robbed the money for the people of South Africa. They will cry tears. That is why <coughs> Prince Mangusutub Telezi yeah. identifies himself with these founders of the ANC and leaders of the ANC because he leaves mm -hmm. their principles. All right, we, 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 we are almost running out of time, but uh, I just need to uh, pick your thought here uh, on, the, in, on the IFP support. Uh, if you look at the beginning, and uh, <coughs> 94, 99, come and up until today, um, that's 2019 uh, by today, you started very high, uh, over a million, close to two million, and then you dropped significantly. Currently, if we look at the national pictures, you are at 588,000 in terms of the votes. Why has the IFP dropped so significantly over the years? But you see, view? Mr. Mbeche, I agree with you. That is why when you raise a fact, I will agree with you. I agree with you with what you are saying, that the IFP has experienced a drop. Yeah. But what is good with the IFP? We are on an upward trajectory now. In 2011, the IFP only won two municipalities, Ulundi and Msinga. We went to the drawing board and we knew we will come back to the game. In 2016, I'm comparing yeah. April to April. Yes. In 2016, we came back with 13 municipalities from two. If you compare provincial and national, compare 2014 and 2019, in 2019, the IFP was on an upward trajectory because we increased our seats in Wazulu Natal, we removed the DA as an official opposition, mm. even nationally, we increased our seat mm. while many political parties experienced decline. Why? One significant character of the IFP now, mm. we are having many young people supporting the IFP, which is something that somehow at yeah. a certain stage did not become the case. Yeah. And in 2021, we will be winning more municipalities on the 1st of November. Yeah. And in 2024, we will be taking control of Wazulu Natal. We have done our calculation and groundwork. Yeah. We have targeted the municipalities and wards that we will win. And you know, <clears throat> people have been saying, but you do not have young people in every gathering.
yeah. you can watch any video. Yeah. The people who are the majority in our activities is women and youth. The people who constitute the majority in our country. In the life of any organization in Belgium, just a yeah. few minutes. Just, uh, we, they are up and down. We, we, we are running out of time. That's why um, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, oh, it's fine. I just want to just get th this one out. So you are basically saying you um, you've arrested the decline because of Definitely the youth. Definitely we have done that. You, you've done we that. went to a drawing board. We identified issues that did not go wrong. We set new targets and we review them from time to time and it is working for us. Are you not worried about the EFF which appears to be taking a lot more vote uh, in terms of the youth uh, uh, even from here? In fact, if you look at 2019, uh, I think they, they, they garnered 300,000. They are not very far from you. And uh, they've actually declared that they want this, um, this municipality where we are broadcasting from a take in. I will not worry that that target audience you're looking for uh, may be taken by the EFF. Not forgetting that the NC still has the lion's share. We are not worried at all, simply because our policies, our manifesto, talk the language of the people. We talk about what people experience on a daily basis. And people of South Africa, even if you are not living in Wazulu Natal, mm. they, if they can zoom in, in the municipalities where we lead, we deliver services. Mm. We do not experience protest of poor service delivery. Mm. We do not have corrupt leaders who have been convicted or who have been charged in the court of law. We trust court of laws because they don't work on political allegations, mm -hmm. they work on concrete facts. In municipalities where we govern, we provide electricity, mm -hmm. we give water, we give roads, we give houses to our people. Even, at, if, you, even if you go back when mm -hmm. we were governing the provincial government of Wazulu Natal and the erstwhile of Wazulu, we did what the current government have not done in terms of infrastructure, schools, clinics, police stations, yeah. colleges of education, Mangosutu University of Technology, Itala Bank. We were outstanding. And just, people, that is why they want to just, vote us again. Yes. They say, we tested your delivery, we, we, we want it again. We are just about to in 10 seconds, um, what is the most important thing people will experience as change should IFP take over? 10 seconds. The IFP will fix the broken down South Africa. We will deliver services. We will be accountable. Whenever we have a problem, we will not run away from the problem. We have made a pledge to be faithful, to give them leaders with integrity whenever we make a promise we okay. keep the promise thank you very much sir well that was the leader of the ifp Velengos Nitlabisa, basically giving us an update or rather a highlight of what they will do uh, should they be given power uh, come the first of november of course uh, we're coming here from uh, deben uh, it's a piece so you can take over now